Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka, welcoming you to another episode of Rural Heritage on RFD TV. This week we'll visit the 2017 Horse Progress Days in Leola, Pennsylvania. Later in the show, Stacy Lynn Harris will show us the hydroponic garden she and her family made from PVC pipe to grow a variety of leafy vegetables. But first, Horse Progress Days. A little over 25 years ago, a group of Amish came up with the idea to hold an event where new horse-drawn farming equipment would be displayed and demonstrated before the public. It would be a place where farmers and manufacturers could share ideas and develop new tools, where people who share a love for draft animal-powered farming could enjoy a couple days of community. It started small and grew each year. Today, visitors and vendors come from all over the world to see the latest in draft horse farming equipment, attend workshops and seminars about back-to-the-land living and homesteading, and make personal and professional connections at this one-of-a-kind event. Tom Greenley from Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. We're here at 2017 Horse Progress Days. We have six of our Shire mares here. Five out of the six are bred and we have nine total at the house two babies this year so hopefully if everything goes well we'll have five babies next year so all's going well there the big thing we wanted to bring our uh, shires the horse progress days to really promote the shire the shire breed and the versatility of the breed our main focus is hitching and showing the shire horse however we do like to come to events like this and show the versatility of these horses these horses are normally in a show ring but it's really neat to bring them out here and hook them to farm equipment and go out and enjoy the afternoon in the field. We really enjoy doing that. We do a little bit of uh, some carriage rides, some riding drives with the horses as well. So, And we ride all of our horses. All of our horses trail ride. And our kids handle the horses. And my daughter started when she was four years old handling the horses. And they're just, it's a true testament to the breed and the versatility and the disposition of the breed.
Becky Zimmerman from Zimmerman Harness. Where, where are you located? Effort of Pennsylvania. And uh, most of your harness for big draft horses? No, we make anything from uh, miniature horses to the draft horses. So and you make it yourselves? We do. Okay, all right. Uh, what kind of trends do you see happening in harness uh, suppliers? Uh, one thing I see, people like uh, something that's easy to take care of, you know. That's one thing that I noticed. That, that so the nylon and the, the, the biothane? The biothane harness, yeah. Tend to go for that because it's easy to maintain. Is it um, as easy to work with as leather um, in your shop? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. So you don't get as many much call for leather harnesses as you used uh, to? We do quite a bit of leather though, but more in the show style, you know, than the pleasure driving. So we make whatever whatever the customer wants. So. Um, it seems like there's a lot of imported um, uh, biothane harness that people can get a lot cheaper than they can buy the stuff yeah. here. What do they get when they buy that stuff? Well, wow, not as good quality as uh, the U.S. made. Uh, that's uh, that's what we make uh, out of the U.S. material. So. I've seen a lot of that imported stuff where the the edges are sharp, uh, they're not tapered off. There's just a lot of shortcuts that they take. Do you yeah. see that as well? Yeah, I see. Uh, you can see with uh, our imported harness when they come in. If somebody has said one, I can notice the difference. Do you make stuff for people just locally, or do you have people sending you measurements from far away? Oh, we do all over the U.S. and uh, some other countries too. So. Uh -huh. um, how was business here yesterday? Oh, good. Yeah. Placing orders or just a lot of people showing interest? Oh, no, we got orders, sold some stuff. So. How often have you been coming to Horse Progress Days? Just when it's in Pennsylvania? Uh, just in Pennsylvania. Yeah. So you were here six years ago, or five years ago. That's the right, yeah. I think that's all I got. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. it. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Stéphane Parrain is from the company Jourdan and he is making, he is making um, equipment, light equipment, mainly to work on produce and also on wine yards, you know, in France, you know. Um, basically, the, the important things is that he is absolutely doing everything in his own place, in his workshop, you know. It's not just buying pieces and putting pieces together, but everything is done at uh, his place, you know. The moldboard? Yeah, all, everything, that's all. That's okay. Everything is coming from his uh, place, you know. Uh, so it's the first time we uh, we are here in, uh, in, in, in America. Uh, we came with another company, which is Celery Pacheron, and they, they are doing color, you know, new uh, style of color so it's 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 a great for us to be there you know for it's not that easy you know to to bring equipment of course it's difficult to bring heavy equipment but at least at the beginning and we hope in the future you know, to come more regularly with more equipment and to show what what the French people are doing because in Europe we got also some uh, some equipment you know um, is he hoping to sell pas to Americans it's it's c'est pour c'est pour vendre aussi uh, uh, oui, le, le, yeah, the, that, that's that's the purpose I mean what we hope is to sell maybe to show maybe sell a few and then if if there is a market if people are interested that uh, we hope it would grow in the, in the future so maybe come back next year or the year or uh, revenir peut-être yeah I think we might be back in next year or uh, in the in the future yeah, sure how are sales in Europe um, uh, sorry how are sales uh, how many se does it sell many Co combien, in combien est-ce que tu en vends en Europe à peu près tu donnes un truc à peu près c'est um, a year par an, à peu près. Ouais, ouais. Around 100 a year. Okay. Okay. It's, it's not like in America with the Amish people where there is a big, big uh, market, of course. Sure. But now it's growing for, for this kind of uh, equipment because uh, produce, wine yard, work in a wine yard with horses are really, really improving now at the moment. So there is more and more sales now. But of course, there is a lot of uh, attachment, you know, uh, it's not only that piece, you know, il uh, y a combien de, de pièces, uh, de, de, de trucs, de boutiques, il y a 7 accessoires différents. Uh, we can put 7 seven, seven different uh, attachments uh, on that, you know. Mainly, it's always walking equipment, you know, very seldom people sitting, because we don't have that big farms, you know, it's only small, small pieces, you know, the part of land, you know, so the people are walking, you know. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Of course, doesn't have to uh, carry the carry, carry it. Yeah, yeah.
For almost 40 years, Rural Heritage Magazine has helped readers borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. The magazine is packed with stories and information about farming and logging with draft animal power, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. If you or someone you know wants to run a self-sufficient, diversified family farm, or just learn how to make a weekend hobby farm more productive, Rural Heritage Magazine is a smart choice. Articles cover a wide range of interesting and useful topics and are written by people living on the land doing the work they write about. A one-year subscription is $34.95 for six issues, 24% off the newsstand price. Sign up for two years and save even more. Order online at www.ruralheritage.com or by calling 319-362-3027. That's www.ruralheritage.com or 319-362-3027. My name is Ryan DeRamus and I'm the education coordinator, but I also do outreach and development at Tillers International. Um, Tillers has been around for 36 years. Um, the, our mission, our main mission is, is an international mission, but um, here in the States, in Southwest Michigan, we preserve um, what Americans would call traditional um, skills, farming, traditional rural skills, traditional farming, um, homesteading, uh, artisanal skills. And we do that by uh, hosting classes, 60 to 80 classes, sometimes up towards 100 classes a year. And, and some of these skills ranging from all kinds of woodworking, furniture making, timber frame construction, um, to coopering to uh, blacksmithing. Blacksmithing is very strong at Tillers and um, there's several uh, levels of blacksmithing courses and then of course the draft animal farming which is kind of at the heart of Tillers mission because we we specialize in the maximization of ox power um, uh, mainly oxen because that's what uh, that's the draft animal power that is uh, available to farmers, smallholder farmers in Africa where we work in Africa Right now we work in, in four uh, countries in Africa, soon to be five. The, the, the museum, our collection, we've been given a great collection of, of historic implements. 
and um, most of which are related to, to horse and animal traction. And so these, these things also kind of anchor us in the, in the preservation of skills and tools and implements. Tool development is, is also a major um, aspect of our international work. And so oftentimes our blacksmiths, our, our um, metal workers, <coughs> our woodworkers at the campus in Southwest Michigan are working on, on designs. Uh, kind of in collaboration with staff overseas, designs that are um, take into consideration the local materials that are available um, overseas. And so there's this, this good uh, uh, cross-pollination, you use the word, of, of ideas to come up with more practical and appropriate technology for farmers. And oftentimes, you know, farmers here, small-scale um, uh, farmers in, in the states are interested in some of these tools that we we develop as well, so that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah, it seems like there's a tradition of tillers being at Horse Progress Days. Dick Rusenberg, I don't know how many years he's been coming here, um, but there's an obvious uh, with the equipment manufacturers. There's a there's an obvious crossover. Um, Pioneer Equipment has been um, very interested in tillers work for quite some time, and Daniel Wingard is is on the board at Tillers. Um, there's been uh, oftentimes when we bring staff over from overseas, the Amish farmers that are associated with some of these equipment manufacturers will allow us to bring our staff there to, to see the farms, to see the factories, to get ideas to take back with them because this is very important in the tool development process. So that's, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a close connection between Horse Progress Days, the Amish manufacturers and tillers, I think is unique. You know, it's, it takes a lot of money to work overseas and, uh, and beyond just working overseas and, and introducing um, different practices or different tools, it takes even more money to monitor and evaluate your work because oftentimes the, 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 the benefits of a, a changed farming practice or a new tool uh, aren't immediately detectable. So, it takes some time to, 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 to stay and, and patiently uh, watch and see. And, um, but that, that, is, that is being done because we have been in Mozambique. We're, we're lucky that we've, we've been able to stay in Mozambique for a lot of time with the Land of Lakes International Project. And they, with their um, you know, more well-funded uh, side of their, their organization, have, have been helpful in, in tracking. And, but as an individual, small NGO, sometimes it can be challenging, but we're, we're, we're working on that to, to improve that because, you know, even though we might be able to see the improvement, sure. right. it's, hard to, it's hard to communicate that because people in the States, they, they just, they want to hear numbers, and, right. and, but it's oftentimes a hard thing to communicate through numbers. Yeah. Uh, I'm Zagarias Robson Mashengwa. I work for Tillers International Mozambique. Uh, Tillers International Mozambique is uh, located in, on the eastern part of, of Zimbabwe. Uh, we are working with uh, small-scale farmers, training them different activities for them to improve their agriculture. We are training them animal traction basics. After that, they will go for, for TOTs, which is training of trainers. We do also uh, artisan trainings, uh, trainings basics. We do have uh, advanced for artisans. And we have uh, we are doing uh, animal uh, animal traction, including forage and pastures. On forage and pastures, we are, we are training most of the artisans and making some forage uh, pro producers like uh, super choppers, slicer choppers, something like that, so that they will they will feed their animals. Especially when you are talking about uh, milk, we are working with the Lando Lex. Uh, my Lando Lex is an uh, American. Uh, uh, project which is from Minnesota. They are dealing with uh, small scale farmers, giving, offering them uh, animals for, for producing milk so that Mozambique will be a lot of milk. And then Tillers is working with the Lando, with the Lando Lakes to, to, to produce more forage and, uh, and hay for their farmers. That's what we are doing now in Mozambique. One of my favorite kitchen appliances is my Harvest Right freeze dryer. It preserves perfectly all my wonderful food from the garden and keeps me prepared for that rainy day that inevitably comes. But I also love to make seasonal soups like vegetable soup, leek soup, pumpkin soup, and potato soup. And that's just what I have here. 
Just spread it on the trays with parchment paper for easy removal, place it in the freeze dryer, and in about 24 hours, you will have freeze-dried potato soup that will last 25 years in Mylar bags. I just love it. Your ancestors preserved and prepared, and now there's a better way. With the Harvest Right Home Freeze Dryer, you can preserve all your favorite foods for up to 25 years. Meats, fruits, vegetables, dairy, and complete meals can be easily freeze-dried right in your home, retaining their original fresh taste and nutrition. To order your Harvest Right Home Freeze Dryer, call us today or visit HarvestRight.com. Harvest Right. Long live your food. Hi, I'm Stacy Lynn Harris and I wanted to show you our hydroponic system. My husband and my family has wanted a hydroponic system for a long time, so my sons and my husband built this for me out of four by fours and out of sewer pipes, and they have a pump hooked up to a bu bucket full of water, and it flows constantly throughout these pipes. There's no soil needed in a hydroponic system, and they actually have hydroponic rock that you can get like on Amazon or anything, you know, like that. But um, you can actually just use lava rock. And that's what we've done. And you just wash the soil off the plant and you leave the roots, you know, in here and have them come through the bottom of the, the little container. And you put these in it to hold the plant upright. and. This is actually moist because of the water going through here and the root system pulling the water up through it. We have a couple of tomatoes and strawberries and lettuce and rosemary, parsley, sage, um, herbs. There's a lot of things you can't plant really very well or successfully in a hydroponics, at least a system like this. So we do have a, a soil garden. There are advantages and disadvantages to this system. Mostly, there are advantages. The only disadvantage that I can really find is that you can't grow everything in it. But, you know, the thing is, is that you can grow most everything. And this is what, you know, this is what it looks like. Um, the only disadvantage that I could really think of is that it runs off of electricity. And so, you know, you'll have a, a, an electric bill. But I am sure that there's a way that you can hook up a solar panel and we will be researching that. So make sure you stay in touch and, and look at my YouTubes and all from now on because I'll be um, exploring that. Um, but anyway, these this is a plant that's only been in there for about three weeks and it's really ready to be harvested. One of the advantages that I love is that you aren't dealing with dirt. So all I have to do is just to take this plant and you know cut it off, take it inside. I'll rinse it off, but I don't have tons of dirt everywhere. And so I love that about that. You can just, another advantage is if you live in a small area, this would work great up on a porch or something where the light, where you get enough light and you can grow these vegetables just right on your porch or on a, a, a balcony, um, you know, an apartment balcony. And so you don't have to have soil. And, and another thing, speaking of soil, soil sometimes has disease and that's really what carries the disease and all. And since there's no soil in this, you don't end up with the diseases and you may not have the right soil type for certain things. And so this obviously is a better choice. So there are lots of advantages to this type of system and I'm excited to see what all grows well with this. We are actually exper experimenting with like some cucumbers and squash and different things like that and I'm going to see how well they, they do in here and I'll keep you posted on that. For more information about this go to GameAndGarden.com. I'm Stacy Lynn Harris. Happy planning and happy cooking. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.